Hi, I'm John Borhek with VMSource's Virtualization. Thank you for continuing with Module 3 of our complimentary course about the free edition of the VMware Hypervisor, also known as ESXi. VMSource's Virtualization specializes in providing the highest quality VMware training and consulting available anywhere. What we're going to do in Module 3 is set the password for our ESXi, configure the management network, download and install the vSphere client to our local workstation, connect to our ESXi instance, apply licensing to ESXi, and then configure NTP. Okay, as you can see ESXi has installed itself to a DHCP provided IP address, so the first thing that we have to do is uh, set some properties of what's known as our management network. So let's go ahead and press F2 to customize the system. And we'll press enter because there's no password assigned yet. And we're going to go ahead and configure a password here. We're going to choose our favorite secure password. Now we're going to scroll down to configuring a management network. All right, we're not using VLANs, but we would like to set an IP address. We're going to use a static IP address with this ESX server. The subnet mask provided is correct, as it's provided by DHCP, as is the default gateway. Now we're going to go down and configure DNS. The DHCP provided DNS servers are correct. However, the host name is not. We're going to call this ESXi 110 dot classroom 100 dot com as is our domain here in this environment. And escape to exit. Okay, we've made changes, so would we like to restart the management network? And the answer is clearly yes, we would like to restart the management network. Let's go down and test the management network. Okay, we haven't joined this system to the domain yet, so we don't have a ability to resolve the host name. That's to be expected. Okay, now we're going to leave our directly attached console, that is to say the keyboard and mouse which are attached to our ESXi, and we're going to move to a Windows box that's on the same network to download and install the vSphere client and then begin to configure the ESXi from the client side. Okay, here we are at Internet Explorer, and we're going to enter the IP address of our ESXi instance. Again, entering the IP address because, as I mentioned earlier, we haven't joined this server to the domain. We have not created hostname resolution for this particular ESXi instance yet. Now, we need to download and install the vSphere client because we don't already have it installed. However, ESXi being a lightweight implementation of uh, the ESX server does not have the vSphere client binaries installed, nor actually does the 4.1 version of ESX server. Those come from VMware, and the install can actually take quite some time, so we'll have to be patient here, and we'll pause the video and skip it ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and click on download the vSphere client, and yes, and then I'm going to choose run, and you can see that, well, it's going to take a while. Okay, now that our vSphere client has finished downloading from VMware, we're going to click on Run. And provide several defaults.
next and next and agreeing to the terms in the license agreement providing some standard default information Okay, there we have it. The vSphere client is now installed and we're going to go ahead and click on finish and minimize our browser window and we're going to start the VMware vSphere client. Now the first time that you log into your ESXi server you're going to need to do so by IP address. using the username root and the password that you provided when we configured it at the console. The first thing that you're going to see is a security warning. You could just ignore this and move on or you could view the certificate. An expedient compromise is to install the certificate and then to choose ignore it so you won't see that warning during future logins to this ESX server. Okay, right now we're running under an evaluation license which is going to expire in 60 days. The very first thing that we want to do is apply the license that we got when we downloaded the vSphere hypervisor from VMware. We're going to do that by first clicking on our server and then choosing configuration. Make this window a little bigger. Choose licensed features. And then choose edit. As you can see, we're running under evaluation mode. We're going to assign a new license key to this host and we're going to type enter key. In this case we're going to enter the key which we got when we downloaded the free VMware hypervisor. Once you've entered your key it'll show you what your entitlement is. With the free hypervisor it's for one to six cores per CPU and you can choose OK. The very next thing that we want to take care of is time configuration for our ESXi. As you can see, not only is the date and time wrong and the NTP client is running, but there are no NTP servers configured. This is not a good configuration. Time is especially important for ESX because it helps you to ensure accurate logging. Let's go ahead and set up our ESX server's time configuration so that our ESX server is getting its time from a Stratum 1 NTP server. Choose Options. Select NTP settings. Choose Add. And we're actually going to add a pool of NTP servers. Zero dot pool dot ntp dot org and I'm going to add three NTP servers one dot pool dot ntp dot org and two dot pool dot ntp dot org and I'm going to say, OK, I am not going to check Restart NTP Service to apply changes at this point in time. All right, now before I go back, I'm going to make sure to set our time to within plus or minus a couple of minutes of my local time on my system. Otherwise, it won't know what time zone we're in. Now I'm going to choose OK. And what you're going to see when we get back here is that our time is now set correctly. The NTP server, the NTP client is running, and the NTP servers are specified 
as 0.pool.ntp.org, 1.pool.ntp.org, and 2.pool.ntp.org. In conclusion, we set the password for our ESXi, we configured the management network, we downloaded and installed the vSphere client, we connected to our ESXi instance by IP address, we configured licensing for the free VMware hypervisor, and we configured NTP. That concludes Module 3 of VMSource's complimentary course in the free VMware hypervisor. To continue with Module 4 or learn more about virtualization, please visit www.vmsources.com. Thanks for watching.